Hello, beta testers. Enjoying that rock steady silence? These optics are so bad that NFTs, Ezra Miller, and Kanye West could be in this game and people would still hate the battle pass tacked on to it even more. You know, the one thing that I think would save this game. <laughs> if you agree with this, like and subscribe. What would instantly make everyone want to pre-order this game is if the trans community and woke journalists all started hating it like they do Hogwarts Legacy. Straight up. If you buy this game, you are not an ally. And uh, what, are you, what are you doing with your wallet? You, oh my god. Oh my, I'm screenshotting this. Guess what they did? All right, no, sorry. Warner Brothers really swooped in and copyright struck all you dumbasses posting that damn picture. But, you know, I'm glad that you did what you did because you're going to manifest a real response from these people who are a little bit too close to launch to not be showing anything. But the weird part to me is instead of using official channels, they reached out to Video Games Chronicle. And I've already heard spooge gargling shills incorrectly claiming that it's cosmetic only but that's not how it's worded it's not even a direct quote and it says cosmetic focused not cosmetic only but i, I guess you're hearing what you want to hear as usual but for anybody actually playing games it should strike you as weird since you've probably not seen a battle pass that hasn't been littered with some sort of currency or uh, resources that might typically speed things up am i saying it can't be done no I'm saying this battle pass is going to have more than cosmetics on it. Yeah. This is a Crystal Dynamics member, developer of Marvel's Avengers, on stage, on camera, at the reveal of Marvel's Avengers bait and switch Kamala Khan trash, promoting and claiming that their game would not have pay to win microtransactions. Only to go back on that word after tricking players into the purchase, of course. I honestly can't pretend looking at this squad that it's not like a D-team. It reminds me so much of Avengers Kamala Khan and Kate Bishop. No matter how much you want to try to pretend she's a fan favorite, to the average person, L. You know what I mean. The best among them, for some reason, looking like this. <laughs> If it was a Harley and Enchantress with two other guys made by designers from eight years ago, <laughs> people would pay hundreds for this game just like for the figures. And I don't mean people like the shill fanboys who are going to buy anything with a DC name on it regardless. I mean the average people, the people you see going nuts right now. In fact, I'm not opposed to the live service with multiple introduced characters, especially when Poison Ivy, Catwoman, and Enchantress can be added. But when I think of them, I have a specific image that pops up in my head, the type of shit that might be on the first page of a Google image search, one that aligns with their famous and popular depictions in comics. But time will tell how woke Rocksteady is now, because one way will make them money, and the other way goes broke. Don't believe me? Avengers tried to fight comic book skins, MCU skins, and sexy skins too, until it realized that that was pretty much the only thing that they could do that people might pay for. Sefton leaves the studio, Kevin Conroy's final appearance as Batman, and instead of a playable Bat family, Poison Ivy Catwoman, a real dream come true for a, a DC game, I would imagine. They chose these dudes and made the most popular DC female on the planet right now ugly <sighs> by definition this harley quinn is bad hogwarts legacy looks good that's why people are not even making a fuss over things like 72 hour early access that doesn't sound consumer friendly but you know who doesn't care people like me who are being told that I must be a blank word if I'm going to support J.K. Rowling. It's for 50 copies of fucking Hogwarts Legacy, please. You know what I'm talking about? If Batman was a playable character in this upcoming game and he could look as good as in that other game, people would suddenly not care what kind of game it is or if there's a battle pass. Wouldn't matter because you'd be appealing to them. Surely. You know how to appeal. They're not insecure weevils inside of that company that are just sitting there ruining, standing in front of what would be profitable, right? I don't think you're putting your best foot forward. 
I think you're following when you used to lead, chasing when you used to be chased. The toughest pill to swallow for these fanboys is that none of us are saying that the game will be bad. We're acknowledging the audacity in a battle pass on top of a paid game when free games seem at a glance to have much more to offer, especially when we've seen so little of this upcoming title. This design, come on, no. And if you think that this is like better, cool, man. But when we talk about appeal, it's literally Goku and Naruto and Deku and sexier DC characters right over there. The sad part is there are a lot of people deluded enough that they'll believe that this will be just as fulfilling as a single player story driven narrative experience. And I'm sorry, but if the eight years ago OG Rocksteady could clone themselves and have two teams working on the game, maybe then one team could hit the the single player and the other team could hit the multiplayer. But I, man, live services need constant content. The cadence or frequency of that content needs to be high quality. There needs to be transparent communication from the developers and most importantly, if it's a superhero game with a power fantasy, they need to understand not to nerf the shit out their heroes. Outriders was supposed to be a PvE game. They didn't understand that. Marvel's Avengers was nerfing and then selling paid XP boosts because they realized, oh, you're going too far. We need to artificially slow you down so we can sell you a solution. I recently watched a former TV executive discuss his thoughts on the Velma show. And it's so hilariously apparent how like over it, the majority of audiences are for this hypocritical, meaningless change filled, like people excluding, but claiming it's inclusive. I covered Marvel's Avengers at launch religiously so that the warning signs would quote hit different for anybody re-experiencing this. So when these Johnny Test watching kids grow the fuck up, <laughs> they're going to be seeing some stuff that they might not have been seeing before. And they'll be able to warn the same way I'm warning now. Do I believe this game will function? Of course. Do I believe that inevitably it will be fun, whether or not it's great at launch or not? Yes. But do I believe they can get away with this? Only if the designer is a genius and deliberately crafted this skin as ugly as possible to incentivize people to buy other skins. Any real comic fan knows what makes money. And only a woke studio would fight and break what isn't broken on this wheel reinvention horseshit. Call of Duty can fall. Halo Infinite can fall. Battlefield can fall. Babylon's fell. Wake up. Just like the people who wanted a single player game saw a live service and said, nope, if I see Poison Ivy and she looks like she was designed by the Saints Row reboot team, then I'll know to wait until Eastern developers or even a mobile game cranks a DC game out because this will not be the one. I honestly hope their response is juicy. Thanks for liking, subscribe so we can enjoy that response that they give together, and tell me what you were wanting with this in the comment section. Man.